Lori here from the Bees Knees Pottery and we're working on gnome houses today. We have done gnomes before. If you want to take a look at that video, it's cute and gives you a lot of technique. Today I'm just going to start with some of the basics. I have my clay already rolled out. Use the roller from your kit. You're going to roll it out and measure it. You want it to be three sticks high. You press those sticks together and you make sure it's the correct depth. The next thing we're going to do is prepare our cone. Everybody has a cone with a plastic sheet over it. Leave the plastic on. We're going to take a pattern and wrap it around your cone. You want to have it neat and leave a little space at the bottom so it's easy to take your house off at the end. Take some tape, put it across there, grab your second pattern, do the same thing. Just for safety measures. If you need more information for this, we do have other clay hand building videos for gnomes. All right, the last pattern, we'll lay it on our clay. There is a cutter in your kit. We're going to just trace around the pattern. Just cut right through to your workspace. And just trace around your pattern. You take all the excess clay, and wrap it in your extra plastic sheet. And just put it aside. Now we have measured out clay. It's going to wrap around our cone. It's going to line it up. We're going to do what's called a blending seam. Press it and blend it. I'm going to take a stick and just smooth that out. For more detailed instruction, we have a gnome tree video that works well for this. Okay, now I'm going to take it, there's a lot of clay, it's pretty thick. We measured it to three sticks. And I'm just going to pull it up over the top of the cone and then roll it. And I'm gonna make this one a little different. This one stopped, you can cut it off right there if you want. We're going to just manipulate that and make it look kind of cute, like it's falling over. If your clay gets dry, remember, go ahead and put a little water on your fingers and smooth it out. Add moisture to it. This way the roof looks like a gnome hat. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is take some of our extra clay and we're going to make a door and some windows. For this we're going to roll it out a little bit thinner. I'm smoothing out my clay, compressing the clay. 
Just aligning all the molecules. Now I can cut out whatever shape door I want. If I want a door that is a rectangle, I cut out that. I'm going to do one that's a little rounded. So I'm taking a needle tool. You'll have one of these in your kit. It's a needle and it's sharp. And it will cut your clay for you. So I'm going to do kind of a rounded door. Just like that. I'm going to put a little window in it. Right out. Take off the excess clay. And for this, I'm going to do scoring and slip. So scoring is the scratching that we've talked about in other videos. rough it up and I'm going to put the door on the opposite side from the seam that I made. Put a little bit of water. I'm going to scratch up the area. And I'm going to put this guy Now I can put texture on there using the same tool. I can come in and maybe make it look like wood. I'm going to do some marks with my tool. I'm going to take my needle tool and go in around that area that I cut out and cut it right through so now there's a hole in my little house that I can see in. Okay, I'm going to take my fingers and just smooth out the edges. See how easy that is to manipulate the clay? Smooth it all out till you like the way it looks. Beautiful. Just like that. Now the next thing I'm going to do is a couple windows. So I'm going to grab some extra clay. I think I'm going to make some round windows. So I'm just going to cut out some circles. And you can just eyeball it. Take a look, see what you think. I'm going to cut out the inside of that. Looks kind of like woodland. A little lopsided. You're going to do your slip and scoring. Don't forget if you don't, your pieces will fall off while it dries. And that's not pretty. So I'm scratching, scoring water to make some slip. And I'm just putting that piece right on there. So now I have a little window. I'm going to do the same thing I did with my door. I'm going to take the needle and cut right through so it's open. This way air can circulate if you put it outdoors. If you do want it outdoors, let us know when you drop it off here because we'll make sure the inside is glazed for you for outdoor use. But there's a little window. to let the air circulate through and prevent mold from growing inside. That way the air can circulate through and you have a nice clean little house for outdoor birds. Okay, you can put as many windows as you like on. You can see this one has some shutters that they put on. Um, you can do a little flower. So the way I would do flowers is to take a ball of clay 
And depending on how many petals you want, just go ahead and, you know, you can decide on the size that you want. It's your design. I'm just going to do four. And we're going to make some scratches on it. Thank the water. Slip and score. And then we're just going to place them on here. Press it down. It's a little circle. Just something simple. And then we'll get one for the center. Cut a couple leaves. Looks like a little eyeball almost for a shape, kind of an oval. The line down the middle. Slip and score. And then for the stem, you can take a piece of clay and roll it in just a coil, straight coil. Score up the middle. You want you can go in and put a little detail with your needle tool I'm just pressing little circle little lines down the middle of the press circles that are our petals and there you go a little flower okay now for a part that's a little more difficult but we're going to break it down so it's simple for you we're going to take the extra clay again We're going to roll it out a little bit. We're going to work on these shingles. Now, if you ever have trouble rolling out your clay, uh, you can always take your extra cover, put it over the top, and roll on top of it. That way, your clay won't stick to your roller. So my clay started out at three sticks. And right now I'm guessing this is probably about two sticks. Yep, two sticks thick. So we flattened it out a little bit so it's not as thick. And we are going to do layers. And if you saw our um, gnome tree video, you'll know that we have done different types of layering up the Piece. This is a little different, but very much the same. So we're taking the needle tool and we are doing, I'm going to use my finger to measure and just do lines that separate it. So it's going to be separated like you see here. So we don't use real fancy measuring tools. You can see I use wooden sticks, my finger. That's I always found it to be the easiest way to do things. And we're going to take this piece. And 
and we're going to slip and score around the comb. So just scratching it all the way. little bit of water make her slip you can see my clay is pretty wet already so that helps when attaching pieces and then we are going to take this and attach it where you want your roof to start now you can do it lower you can do it higher when you get where the pieces come together here you're going to cut both through both layers Cut through the two layers of shingles, take one part off, lift it up, take the other part off, and then they're going to match perfectly for you. You just take your finger, do those blending seams that we've done, and make sure your shingles are pressed onto your piece. Now we're going to just go ahead and do rows, continuing up until we want wherever we want to stop. So one thing you want to do is alternate your shingles and remember that your shingles don't have to be perfect. It is rustic. So just keep that in mind. Don't look for perfection and that turns out much cuter. When you reach the top where you want to start, stop, you just take your finger and do that blending seam. So I'm stopping right here. I'm going to have this come out. It almost looks like a stem at this point. So I'm going to stop there. Blend that in so it all looks continuous. And I'm going to take my needle tool and put some lines to this just to rough it up a bit and go through fingers in the water and just smooth out go ahead and smooth out your shingles so you look like the way they look if there's any cracks in your clay Marks from fingernails, that's me. And I'm just going to clean up everything, take a look at it. There we go. There's our nail house. We have flowers, a door, window. You can put as many windows as you like. And the next thing we're going to do is clean up our work area and then just let your piece dry for a half hour at the mo at the least, um, maybe up to two hours, so half hour to two hours. Depends on the humidity in your home, but you don't want it to be wet. You want it to be somewhat dry. 
We're all ready for painting. We have a clean workspace. In your kit, your paint kit, your tool kit, you will have some paint. We're going to take the yellow, just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to take one of the brushes, and I'm going to show you how to paint. If you want more information, there will be instructions in your kit, but also in our other videos, it will show you how to paint wet clay. So, paintbrush, quite a bit of paint, and I'm just dabbing, I'm dabbing those colors on. I'm not brushing them, I'm dabbing them on. That's the most important thing as you're painting. Light colors first, dark colors will cover light colors. So you need to start with your light colors. And I'm dabbing. Now for my second coat, after it dries, give it a half hour, hour to let your layer or coat dry. And then you can go back and your second layer, you can actually brush that on. Okay, but you can see as I'm brushing it in now, it's pulling off. So you want it to be dry and first coat you're going to pat on. After you're done painting both coats, and three if you like, that's fine, um, you're going to let it dry again. I would let it dry for a few hours, and then you're ready to um, bring it back to the studio. Take your plastic workspace, bring it up as high as you can like this, pick it up, and put it in your bag. Now, it's very important before you do this, we need to take the cone out. Okay. So to take the cone out, you're going to take your finger and go around. That's why we have that extra space. Go around, grab the cone. See how I'm just grabbing that cone part? Pull it right out. Now there might be some paper in it. You can pull that out if you want, but you can also, if it's a problem, just leave it in there. It's okay. It's not a big deal. It'll dry and either we'll be able to take it out before we fire it or we'll leave it in. It'll burn out. So, two, remember when we put the two papers on there? That's why. It just makes it easier for the cone to come out. Once your cone's out, just like I showed you before, go ahead and pull up the corners. You have something to protect it when you put it inside your bag to bring back to the studio. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate it. If you'd like to order a kit, please look down in the description. And if you have any questions about some of the techniques I went over quickly, make sure to check out the other videos. Thank you.